You, you, you want to shake it? You want to shake it? <laughs> God damn. Welcome to the show, brother. Thanks. Have a thanks. seat. Have a seat. <sighs> Give it up for James Barger, everyone. Thank you. James. Yes. How cool is this? This is great. This is the best fireside chat I've ever done. This Ooh, is amazing. Fireside. I thought you were going to share your secrets, my friend. Well, we're going to tell all. We're going to tell yeah, it yeah. all, James. You can, I, I live with an open heart, so you can ask me anything. And you're Canadian, right? Yeah, and I'm Canadian. Absolutely. Which makes you the friendliest person in the room. I, I'll always apologize about it. <laughs> exactly. I've had four people in the last two days say, just don't apologize. And it's, it's hard not to. Well, so. I'm sorry about that. Yeah, I okay. kind of grew up in England, so I'm also a bit apologetic. <laughs> but thank you for joining us. Uh, are you based there? Where are you based? I'm based in Edinburgh, in Scotland. In Scotland. Most of the time. Like You like the cold? Well, yeah, I grew up in the cold. I grew up in Canada, right? With Santa Claus. So, yeah. <laughs> exactly. So, the Santa Claus bit, that's an yeah. interesting one. Because, yeah. James, tell us why you know Santa Claus exists. Well, you know, everyone knows Santa Claus exists, but... Uh, oh, wait, hold on. Are there any children in the room? We're good, we're safe, go yeah. So I, I come from a, a town called Cloverdale, which is just outside Vancouver in Canada, and uh, everyone has seen Cloverdale, and everyone's seen Santa Claus, because we've all seen the commercial with Santa Claus on the back of the lorry, right? You know, home, uh, Christmas is coming home. Has everyone seen that? Always Coca-Cola, always no? Coca-Cola, always Coca-Cola, always Coca-Cola, most of us seen it. Always Coca-Cola, always Coca-Cola. So as the local claim to fame, that's, that's where uh, that was filmed. Was Were you the little boy in the commercial? No, I wish I was. Oh. I was a little bit old by that time. It was <laughs> 1995, I think it was. I mean, the beard wasn't quite... No, no, no. no. I'm, I'm, I'm on my path to be Santa Claus. <laughs> he really is from Cloverdale, after all. Yeah. You are an e-resident, are you not? I am. Any e-residents in the room? Raise your hand. E-residents? Because everyone's an actual resident, that's why. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> There's a few of us here. There's a good group of e-residents and a bunch from uh, the UK as well. Really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. How many we came e on mass. How many e-residents are there? Do we know the stats on There's that? about 100,000 of them. Wow. What's the like, largest population they come from? Uh, I think the UK is actually one of the biggest really? markets. Yeah, yeah. Wow. What does it mean to be an e-resident and why did you become one? Uh, so, good question. So, I mean, e-residency program's been around for a long time. Uh, I think about six or eight years, somewhere around there. Uh, and, you know, a lot like the commercial in Canada and, and Vancouver has kind of helped put Estonia on the map, which is great. Uh, for me, it was all about setting up a business here. So, we're, we're going through regulation in Estonia. We need to set up a business. We need to, to start trading and signing things and doing things. Mm -hmm. And e-residency program and, and getting an Estonian ideas is by far an easiest, the, the easiest way to do any of that. So uh, just convenience, just, just makes things happen. And, and the business side of it, because I think a lot of people become e-residents to become business owners through Estonia, right? Yeah. Why is Estonia an attractive place to have a business? Well, I think, I mean, it's not just about tax. I think it's about that convenience, mm. that ease what, of... What is the tax benefit, though? Just <clears throat> to make a note say, I live in Norway. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> uh, so I think on consumer personal tax, is 20%. Flat tax, uh, corporate is about the same, but mm. there's a social tax, so slightly higher. So that's out a little bit better for people and slightly worse for the company. But uh, a lot of benefits, like you don't get tax if uh, you keep the money in the business and that sort of thing. So no. it's all around attracting that inward investment and trying to create as much momentum for the Estonian economy as, as possible. And if you, if you talk to someone like Tavi, as the, the founder of eResidence, the impact that it's made has, has been fantastic. I think it's had a huge direct impact into uh, the Estonian uh, ecosystem, right? Mm. The, the economy. There you go. Yes, exactly. Direct ID, yeah. your business. Take me back to the beginning. Uh, what was that was a long time ago. Was that was 12 it? years ago. Was it 12 years ago? Yeah, wow. yeah, yeah, yeah. Which is actually, I mean, startups tend these days to live for five to seven years max, right? 12 years going. Take me back to the beginning. Why did that business start and, and where is it today? So at the beginning, it was all around how to create convenience in the world, right? There's a lot of things that we do that, that are hugely difficult. Setting up a business, getting a bank account, taking out a mortgage. Uh, and at the in time, it was all around how can we empower people with their data, right? This is before GDPR and everything, but how can, we, how can we remove that friction by leveraging the identity and data people have in their bank account, using that as a source of trust, because your bank knows you really, really well. It's a huge amount of valuable information, and a lot of times when you go through these processes, you, you have to share your bank statements anyways, right? So we created a digital passport, uh, e-identity type thing. A bit early for his time, you know, so we did pivot. Uh, but, but it was all around creating that sort of convenience in the world. 
uh, four or five years ago, we pivoted to a B2B model. So that was, that was our pivot, was not changing the, the ethos or, or the purpose of what we were doing, which is all around access and financial inclusion and, and empowering people to go through these processes. But it was moving from a B to C to B, which is really difficult to B a B to, to C to B. Yeah. You love the buzzwords. Oh, it's horrible, <laughs> I the isn't book it? I remember. Yeah. <laughs> Into a, a, a sort of B to B service. So we, we now help people like Ford and Deliveroo and EY and Deloitte and, and IKEA now as well. So, so who's the typical customer then? Is it an individual trying to get a loan or trying to, what's the sort of use it's, case? It's all lenders, right? So we've all gone through a account opening mortgage, credit card. Anyone not gone through? Yeah, we've all gone through that process. And, and they're very painful processes. You have to share a lot of information. You have to prove your income, prove your affordability. Uh, and it's just a pain in the butt. So uh, by using open banking or PSD2, using open banking data, your bank statements, we can, we can finish that process in seconds. For the ignorant people in the room or person, yeah. uh, open banking, Yeah. what does that actually mean? So uh, open banking is about sharing your data from your bank account, really. So There's two parts to... of it, but yeah, okay. that's, that's the part that we work on. And lots of buzzwords in the industry, but <laughs> it's essentially just sharing a digital copy of your bank statement. We had, you know, Timu at the beginning of the show this morning from Ready Player Me in the metaverse space. Um, you know, we've had various founders, and tomorrow we'll have the same. Uh, open banking, metaverse, avatars, you know, it, crypto, I mean, are they all same of sameness, or are they completely different spaces? Uh, I think there's overlap, but yeah, fairly different most, most, most of the time. Where are you guys in that crypto space? I mean, because if we're thinking about blockchain, right? Yeah. Smart contracts. Um, who's had a blockchain in the room? No one. No one. I mean, it's not a bad thing, to be honest. Who's got all their money in Bitcoins? <laughs> yeah, people are staying quiet. Taxes yeah. are starting to come in now. Yeah. Blockchain, I mean, obviously, it's effectively the underlying technology and ledger underneath crypto that allows people to, you know, basically me to go, hey, uh, I'll sell you this iPad. Yeah. Uh, it's linked in the blockchain. Uh, the chain, if you were to think about it, link gets written effectively in stone, so we can always track back, I sold you this. Now, you can create a smart contract out of this, right? Mm. Are you leveraging blockchain? Uh, we're not directly ourselves. Our customers do. Some of the, the companies we work with absolutely do. Uh, a long time ago, years ago, we powered most of the crypto market. So we you powered. Sorry. <clears throat> yeah, yeah. Rewind. A few yeah. years ago, you powered most of the. Crypto yeah, we market. helped uh, people like Mt. Gox and Trade Ledger, uh, Bitalicious, BDC, Quick, all the Bitcoin companies. Back in the day, almost, this shows my age, uh, uh, we help them onboard customers. So our, our uh, fit in that space is around helping people connect their bank account, proving they are who they say they are, doing that KYC and AML bit, and, and letting people get access to those platforms again really, really quickly. Where is your product going? Because if we have already, say I came to you and I yeah, yeah. want to, it's a, like a new digital credit score, basically, right? Yeah, is yeah. We're, look at it? we're a financially inclusive, real-time credit score Yeah. Uh, and currently operate across 45, over 45 countries right now. Wow. So, you know, all those digital nomads, all those new, new to country, I'm from Canada, you're from South Africa, we've all gone through that pain of having to exist in order to then get access to other things, right? Yeah. So that's, that's our purpose, that's what we're changing, is we wanna, we wanna create a level playing field, we wanna create a credit score that people can take with them and, and use wherever they need to. Do you think that will ever replace the real current credit score system? I hope so, because yeah. it's fundamentally broken, mm. and uh, without ranting too much, it's, it's just rubbish, right? The idea that you have to get credit to, you have to have credit to get credit. That's the counterintuitive thing. You know how that works, right? You need, you need debt to get debt, right? So like, I actually don't, I don't, have, I don't own a, I don't have a mortgage anymore or anything like that. I'm like yeah. debt free, actually. Congratulations. And, uh, and yeah, exactly. Uh, and I moved back to Norway last year, training for the Olympics 2026, watch out for me. Um, and you know, I started banking okay. again in Norway, and I tried to apply for for this credit card from Norwegian, and I got denied. Yeah, yeah. You know, and because oh, I've been out of the system for a bit, and but and that's exactly it. That's exactly it. Why would you? Why should you get denied? Yeah. And there's strange. just as many people that have never had credit that get denied, and I don't think there is the responsibility on some of those companies that there should be. Right. This. This idea that you should go to university, get a credit card, use your student loan to pay off your rent, right? I don't know if that's in Estonia, but you know, a lot of us from different places will have heard those stories, right? Very prevalent in North America and the UK and stuff. 
why should we encourage people to have debt when, when they don't need to? Mm. It should be something that you get when you need to for a reasonable reason. You shouldn't, you shouldn't desensitize the population to debt just because at some point you might want to buy a car. Yeah. Because that's what you're talking about, exactly. right? Like you should, you should what, have 20 credit cards in Norway just because you might want to get a mortgage at some point? It doesn't make sense to me. And you look at the countries that have strong credit reference industries and those that have debt-based societies, and they're the same. Yeah. Because in order to get credit, you have to have credit. It's ridiculous. Lastly, my friend, great audience here. What's next for Direct ID, and how can we play a role in that journey? Uh, well, what's next is just to, to continue to expand globally. So we want to we want to make the change, right? We want to execute and, and grow. Uh, we took some investment from uh, IKEA a couple months ago, which is fantastic. IKEA, they've, wow. they've got 657 million customers for us to help. So wow. that's a big part of the next sort of six, 12 months is doing that. And then, you know, just keep us in mind. Any, any opportunities for us to help change the world, to create that inclusion is, mm. is fantastic. That's what we want to do. And what, what can we do for you? Uh, tell the world about Direct ID. How's that? You hear that from here? Believe in himself. Santa Claus. Believe in Santa Claus. <laughs> Believe in Santa Claus. James Varga from Direct ID, everyone! James. Thank you, brother. Thank, Thank you. you. That was good Cheers. fun. That was good Cheers. fun. Play game.